Hey guys, Ali Reza here and in this video we will go over variables in UE5 and see what they are and what they are used for. If you are trying to learn blueprints, having a good understanding about variables is necessary. So if you are a beginner and want to know what they are, you are in the right place. I will explain them one by one and try to give an example for each. Let's jump right in and get started. Variables are basically the data that we can store and then give into the engine to process. A variable is essentially a way of storing some type of information. There is lots of different types of information, so there are different types of variables as well. In this video, we'll get familiar with them and see how they are used. Alright, now let's make a blueprint, name it variables explained and drag it into the scene. Open it up and here in the left side of your screen you can see the variable section. When you want to create a new one you can choose from these guys here or you can just make one and then change it here in the details tab. You can see that we have a lot of variable types here but these are the main ones you will be using most of the time so only knowing these guys here is enough for starters. Okay the first variable here is boolean. It's basically a true or false node and is quite useful in making game logic. Let's drag it into the event graph and choose get. Get nodes give us whatever the value is. We can also do set and now we can set and actually change the value first and then use it in our chain of events. Here in this tutorial I'm only going to use get and we don't need set here. We just want to get familiar with the different types of variables and we are not going to get things complicated. Now here you can change the value of your variables but first you have to compile. So let's compile and now we can see that the boolean variable can be true or it can be false. Let's add an event tick node so it runs the code on every frame and then add a print string function. Now let's add a branch and say that if it was true, type boolean is true and when it was false, type boolean is false. Now let's plug the boolean into the condition and now the boolean decides whether the branch should run the true output or the false output. If the boolean is true we can see that the print string number 1 gets activated and types boolean is true and if the boolean is false then the print string number 2 gets activated and types what we write in the text box. This is an example about how boolean is used and as I said it is very useful in creating game logic. For example let's say that you want to check if the character has the key for a door or not. If he has the key the boolean for the door should be true and the door should be unlocked and if he doesn't have the key the boolean will be false and the door will remain locked. Alright the next variable is byte. It is a whole number value between 0 and 255. It is used for saving memory and in projects that memory saving really matters, you can use it. The next two are integer and integer 64. Integer is a whole number with no decimals and can be positive or negative like minus 5, 7, 58 and it cannot have decimal points like this. The difference between them is their range. Integer is between these values here and integer 64 is between these values. You can see that the integer 64 has a bigger range than integer. So if you need a whole number value you can use an integer. The next one is float. It is a number value with a decimal such as 8.3 minus 9.655 and etc. And can be positive or negative. Here you can see that it accepts numbers with decimals. Next we have name, string and text. They are all text data but they all have their own limitations and their own uses. Name variables are quite limited and tend to be used to identify something in the game. For example if you want to name something like a character or a level which usually won't be changed you can use name. They are used for text that the player won't see in the game. For instance, it's not used for dialog boxes or any information that is visible in the level. Moving on, we have a string. 
it's like name but the difference is that it's changeable for example you can have a string that represents the status of a character the default string can be alive and when the character dies it can change to dead which indicates that our character is dead so you can use a string for changeable text next we have text text variables are used for any text that the player will see it can be used for things like character dialogue ui menus credit screens and things like that the reason for this is that they support unreal engine localization features for example let's say that you have made all the visible text for the players in english if you want to change all your text to say for example German, Ariel has the capability to change all your text into German or any other language and will make your game playable with different languages in an instance. This is one of the main reasons for the differentiation between these three text variables. Okay, next we have vector. It is a set of three numbers, x, y, and z. This type is useful for 3D coordinates and RGB color data. For example, let's say that we want to spawn an emitter in a location we want in our level. Let's add event begin play, a delay for 2 seconds so we can see it appearing in the level a little after we start the game, and then spawn emitter at location. Let's choose a particle and now we need a value with 3 numbers which are x, y and z for the location. Here I can use a vector variable and say that spawn the actor at 1200 for x, 2000 for y, and 500 for z. As we can see our fire particle is spawned at the location based on the vector variable we made. Moving on we have rotator. It is kind of similar with vector. Vectors control the location of the actors in the world and rotators control their rotation. Let's add a cube to our blueprint and then set rotation for it after 2 seconds. Here we need a value for the rotation and now the rotator variable does the job for us. Let's give some values for each axis to rotate around. And now we can see that our blueprint will be rotated based on the value of the rotator. And the last one is transform. It's a set of data that combines translation, which is 3D position, rotation, and scale. It has data for the location, rotation, and the scale of the actor at the same time. Let's add a set transform and then plug the transform variable into it. Put some numbers here to change the location. Then some numbers to change the rotation and also let's change the scale. Now you can see that they all will change based on the numbers we give in the transform variable. And yep, that's it. This was a very quick overview of variables in UE5 and I hope it was a good introduction to them for anyone who wants to start their journey learning blueprints. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for watching, catch you later.